Hi, Sharon. Hi, Mandy. Is it worth it? I don't know. (sighs) (laughs) (laughs) They just keep watching growing. Yeah. 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 Hang on in there and it'll all pay off in the end. I sure hope so. That is that is one of the that one of the ways that I would interpret the Seven of Pentacles. Definitely. He's got that (laughs) one little coin beneath his feet and he's looking at the rest of the tree like, are you gonna grow? Yeah. (laughs) He looks very, very bored or it's hard. I honestly think it's inconclusive. Like yeah. he could be thinking, I'm sick to death of this. Like I'm just working so hard and it just and it just doesn't seem to be getting anywhere. On the other hand, he could be looking at it thinking, I'm worn out, but you know, I've achieved quite a lot today. Yeah. It's I, it's, I don't know. I think there's a variety of interpretations because I don't think the expression on his face is definitely one thing or another. Oh, he could be dre- daydreaming about what yeah. he's going to do with the rest of those coins. He sure uh, could Yeah, be. yeah. And, and also it's like, is this work he's already done or is this work that he still has to do? Like, is he, you know, is he making that bush grow with abundance so he's only got one pentacle left to kind of plant on the bush or... Is it that he has to get all the fruit off the bush and he's only done one and he's still got all the others to go? <laughs> it's, really, it's really open to interpretation, just even on face value. And I went through a period of time too where this one, um, it felt like, you know how you work your butt off for somebody else and uh, and and you've got the one coin and you're watching the, all the other coins go to them. And when I worked in retail, it was like, wow, <laughs> you know. Absolutely. That you just get your little bit and uh, somebody else is benefiting from it. But yeah. on the other hand, you might be, he might be looking at that thinking, one day I want to own my own business. So I'm the one that gets the lion's share. You know, it, it, you, it, who knows how broad his thinking <laughs> or narrow his thinking is. So Again, with, yeah, that ambiguity where he could just, he could be doing so many things. And I've seen him in many, many different ways. Yes. Yeah. <sighs> Surely you've heard this, this, this story. I, I know it's kind of early to tell a story, but you know, You know, I have narcolepsy, right? Yes. And one of the symptoms of narcolepsy is severe hallucinations, auditory and visual. And when I worked at the produce section, whenever I would put out the yellow squash, the summer squash, I would go into this like total autopilot fugue state and I would see the most amazing places in my head and they all felt familiar but they were all nowhere I'd ever been just beautiful places and someone would have to come by one of the bosses if they knew I was putting out squash and stop me because I'd still be putting out squash and the box be empty right oh really? so my boss was like Sharon you got to ask your doctor about this I was like there's no way this is a medical condition that's stupid so I went to my sleep doctor and he pulled out these flashcards of colors and he flashed them all at me and then he said stay away from the squash it puts you in a sense state of instant rem right (laughs) so (laughs) so about this time last year um i had gone outside to check the mail and i was hearing this amazing music like wind wind instrument music but it was a tune and I was like where is that music coming from where is that music coming from and the wind was blowing and I noticed that the the new neighbor had the wind chimes but I was like but it's in a tune wind chimes don't make tunes so I was looking at the wind chimes and on the side of her trailer these lights started 
twirling and chasing each other. It looked like a miniature firecracker, but it was moving. And I was like, oh my God, that's so beautiful. I was like, Paul, Paul, please come and tell me if this is real. And he was like, I'm not doing that. Oh my God. <laughs> so I had a group that night of, of people and, and we were going to, we, we did a spread on, was it real or was I hallucinating? And the very first card that came up was this one. And they all started laughing. It was the yellow squash. Oh my God. <laughs> That's such a brilliant seven of coins story. That is like, that is crazy. <laughs> I will remind you that when I meet you, I will remind myself not to get squash. <laughs> and not to wear too pretty of a yellow is my favorite color. My son says it's my drug of choice because I do. I just like, I sit there going. <sighs> God. That's amazing. So now, I, I just honestly think you've just got to absolutely open your mind to what that card could be telling you, because I think there's loads of possibilities. Um, I, I also I can remember saying. I might have said this when it was in reverse, but I can see it also in the upright about there is a separation between him and and the workload. It's kind of like. It's there and, he, and it's close to him, but he's not actually, he's not actually touching it. And, I, yeah. and for some reason that was relevant in a reading at one point about a kind of like, you know, there was a division between him and, and the work that he had to do. So, you know, I, I spotted the gap. The gap meant something on one occasion. Yeah. I also think he's, He's very unproportional, isn't he, physically? He's got short legs and an extremely long body. I think it's the tunic itself is just so large. It's like maybe he's wearing clothes too big for him. And that could mean he something. Me, he reminds me there's a, a play. Oh, I this is really annoying because I have... I've I've heard myself say attempt to say this before and forget the name of the play, but there's a famous play that is written about a guy who's very very large. He's very big, not necessarily large as in fat, but he's he's big and he's kind of he's clumsy, but he's a, like a big gentle giant. And I think he hurt someone or killed someone. Of mice and men. That's the one. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> he killed someone or he hurt someone and it's completely accidentally, but just because of his physicality. And, and I, it just might be relevant to this card as something along those lines. Yeah, absolutely. That's the beauty of the tarot is that, that it does. It spurs those thoughts those those randomly seeming thoughts yeah that's your intuition hard hard at work yeah so it could definitely be something like that yeah yeah and actually i i'm really noticing it here more so here now than in my deck so i don't know if my deck has been put right but the boots are slightly different colors to each other yeah, I think in the, the newer decks, this one is the Pamela C. Right. Um, so I think in the newer decks, the uh, the boots are the right colors. Right. But yeah, it, he has sort of slightly got it wrong, hasn't he? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. And I, I, I quite like this card come, when it comes up because I think it's quite a neutral card in itself. It's new. It's It's definitely not an extremely bad card or an extremely good card it is somewhere in the middle and it can go in any direction really it really um, could it you know is it about self-worth maybe you know is it about work maybe is it about finances maybe is it about oh you know there's all those lovely girls out there uh you know but they're not interested in me or like you know only the one only the one that no one wants 
And I'm saying cultivation or renovation because that really harsh landscape behind him and look what he's done in the area he's in. Yes. Yeah, that's lovely. So no, that I, might I, not just be a look of boredom. I mean, it might just be a look of contentment. If you don't mind, Sharon, I'd quite like to show you the two cards that I brought in simply because I want to prove how flexible the Rider weight is compared to certain other decks. I mean, I can't talk for every deck. Yeah, I mean, I know we mentioned her the other day when we did the Housewives Tarot deck, but this, this you know, this is going to be quite a while before this card meaning one gets shown. But that is a beautiful Seven of Pentacles. I mean, yes. you know, she's there, she's got her lovely basket, she looks elegant, she's got, she's a very classy lady. To me, this is much more Nine of Pentacles than Seven of Pentacles for a start. But, you know, the garden is blooming, the flowers are all blooming, everything about this card is so middle class and excellent. It doesn't have the flexibility that the rider weight does. Not it, at all. It kind of tells you this is great. This is going to grow. It's a lovely card and it would be a very positive card to come up in a reading. Whereas the rider weight version, you just got to go with what your intuition tells you on that particular day. Because one day I will see that rider weight version in many, many different ways. I will see the expression on his face change for me like every time I look at that card I don't know what what it's going to say to me today whereas I feel this one I'm going to have a very similar message every time this card comes up other than I'm not uh, you know answering the question if that, if that makes sense some people prefer that but it's so to me and, and I'm not going to knock anybody who prefers one because they may be learning but yeah. that limits their learning as well I I I I would recommend starting with the one of the harder to read decks where you have to rely on your intuition so you can yeah. learn. And then after you've learned how to use your intuition, then go to the deck that really snags you and learn that deck. Yeah. So but yeah. it is limiting. No, this is an absolutely lovely card and I really like it. And 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 it would warm my heart you know when it comes up in a reading assuming it's just, we're talking upright cards at the moment you know but as I say I, I, I enjoy the openness and, 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 the, and the kind of like you know the numerous possibilities of the of the right away I think that's that's more exciting for me to read than something like this even though it's a lovely picture and, and you know I'd have a certain amount to say but you're very much being swayed by the the artwork into a certain direction in how you interpret now again in a very different way it's you're you're being pulled in a very certain direction on how to interpret it mm -hmm. so whereas she's all happy and content and beautiful in her garden this guy really is sad and fed up and you know it's like that that is much clearer his expression than the rider weight but again that will then very much it, it very much influence how you read the card absolutely so this wow. is the point i thought i would use this because i i did it deliberately on the seven of pentacles because i do find it such an ambiguous card and, and such a flexible card and, and i'm just saying that other artwork can take that quality away from it because they are being very specific in how they want you to read it that's yeah fun. yeah that's that's a lot of tarot decks out there and that's the beauty of making your own tarot deck too is the art reflects how that artist sees this card does that make sense yeah i mean is he, uh, he to me he looks sad he looks like he failed it could be that he's tired but that looks miserable i just think that's an unhappy little man there that that's, is. I, it, it, it's a very very clear and strong expression and 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 that's very much oh focusing where you're going to go with the interpretation of this card so and in a different light 
I've got the Alice Tarot by Bob Bostodio. Oh, I love that. I just <laughs> think it's fantastic. I really like that. I love it because he's not just sitting there and no. and they they're discontent with the color of the roses. The queen is gonna cut off their heads. So yeah, they yeah. used a paintbrush to paint the roses. They they this is what we've got. Let's do something about it. Right, okay. <laughs> Okay. Definitely one of the most unusual seven. Yeah, so they are they are basically they are what's the word? Um trans transforming the, the bush from a white bush to a red bush. Yep. <laughs> that, well, how can you possibly read that the same way as any of the examples I, that I gave or the or the original you just you can't you can't you just you gotta the, know your dad the, the seven is all about um i don't know is it about kind of like imagination and is it is it all about what things maybe could be a, a little bit wishful is it it could be it could be because they're wishing for it to be red so they're they're not just wishing though they're they're painting those roses. Yeah, well, they're red. wishing that by turning it red that they, they, they'll keep their heads. Yeah, they wish involved there some, <laughs> somehow. And I kind of feel that the handsome Roberts one is just wishing that that, that 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 it was over. Yeah. And I feel that the the original one, it's kind of who knows what he's wishing for. Right. I you could go either way with him. Yeah. I honestly think the strongest card out of all of the examples we've shown is the original. That, that kind of like has more power in it. And more flexibility. It gives you, there's a, there's a form of divination called Lenormand. And yes. Lenormand has very strict rules. It doesn't have anything to do with intuition. You, you, most Lenormand readers, traditional Lenormand reading is this means this, and this means this, the end. You don't, right. it, and if you fear from that, you're just not doing it right. Now, I know one Lenormand reader who uses her intuition and her Lenormand readings are amazing. But traditional Lenormand readers hate her because she veers with her intuition. So the the thing with tarot is you're supposed to be able, it's open to intuition. It's better with intuition. It's not Lenormand. Yeah. So I like yeah. the ambiguity of cards or cards that could be interpreted in so many ways. And you know which way to interpret them. In a the way they all can. In a way yeah. they all can. But there are some cards that are, I think, designed that way more so. In, and Seven of Pentacles being one of them. And that, that makes me attracted to that card. Because I just think, oh, now, now, now where are we going? Kind of when he pops <laughs> up, you know. I, I do. I do. I like it. And it makes it way more fun when you can look at a card and see freaking squash. <laughs> <laughs> or, oh, yeah, she's hallucinating. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> what do you think about him in reverse, Sharon? Oh, let's take a look at him. Because I find the ambiguous cards more, dif more difficult in reverse because I think you could see because you can see so many aspects of them in the upright, do you need them to come up in reverse to kind of see the other side? So I find that they're more challenging in the reverse than, than a, another card that might be clearly happy or sad. And then when you reverse it, you sort of know a little bit where to go. Whereas this, you're thinking, oh, hang on. Now where do I go with it sort of thing? Well, in the reverse, it just feels like that coin dominates him, right. that, that it's an obsession. It turns more into an obsession than amusing. Right. You know, and whether it's an obsession of money, I, he could be a workaholic. He might not be taking that break to consider. He just keeps plowing on. Yeah. Um, 
workaholics not necessarily a bad thing especially to the workaholic but the people around them now that you've actually done that i do think that when i noticed the gap it was when it was in reverse i i, I think it was in reverse when i noticed the gap where it's like you need to absolutely step away from this situation to be able to sort of see it properly you know yeah yeah, um, yeah. um and, and maybe look, and also I think it, that card in between his legs, the one that got away, seems a bit more prominent in the reverse as well. Yeah, yeah, he's obsessed. But you know the sort of like when people are doing like say internet dating or something like that, and like to find the right one is like looking for a needle in a haystack. Maybe it's kind of like, if you take a step back, the needle in the haystack might, be, might actually jump out at you right between your legs no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah again i just think you have to let your intuition dictate why it's come up reversed and the best way to get in touch with your intuition is play with the cards yeah. You know, do it out of context. Instead of going straight into a reading, look at that card and see all the different things it could mean to you. Then you don't get tripped up when it means something really weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even though the, 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 all the pentacles look the same, for some reason, in the reverse, I'm drawn to the fact that it's not about quantity, it's about quality. Oh, I like that. And that really is the best card for that interpretation. Because, because I think when you go into reverse, you don't really look at the expression on his face at all. So in the upright, you, you tend to be a little bit sort of drawn to his face and it's like, is he sad? Is he just, what's he thinking? You're drawn to what is he thinking, but in the reverse, you don't, his expression sort of somehow doesn't seem to be what I'm meant to be looking at. I feel I'm meant to be looking at the coins. I think you're absolutely right there. And I love that, qu qu not quali quantity, quality. I couldn't get that out. Yeah. No, I, 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 I really like this card a lot. Me too. I just, I, I think that I have that special affinity with the, the hallucinations. <laughs> and <laughs> that may not ever come up as an interpretation for anybody else. But art evokes an emotion or elicits a thought inside of us. Yes. And that's where that, and, and they did. They just, that whole group, because they knew. They knew that story and they were just cracking up. None of them. I mean, no one of them had to say anything. They just, she turned over the, the seven of coins and they all just started screaming, laughing. <laughs> like you couldn't write that story, could you? Do you know? Uh -huh. That is an amazing story. Wow. Wow. Well, have you got any more to say about the Seven of Coins? Or shall Not we sort today. of send him off on his way? But oh. I definitely, I am definitely um, yet to find a Seven of Coins. Even though we're going through some lovely decks now on our series of decks and we're seeing some amazing artwork, I think the Seven of Coins is going to be quite difficult to improve on the Rider Waite version I'm, for me. I agree 100%. That's why there's always, you know, you get those new decks and you're in love and there's always that one or three or 10 cards yeah. that just don't do it for you. <laughs> I just, I just feel, I just feel it's because it kind of opens itself up to so many possibilities, like just instantly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and when you practice and you play with them and you know them, the possibilities narrow down to where you know what it is. Never, ever, and I don't know if we've said this before or not, but never, ever try to cram all the possibilities into oh, one no, meaning, no, one no, reading. No. But I don't think we have said this on um, any of these podcasts, actually. Yeah, it's whatever is the right reading for that question 
at that moment in time. Yeah, because if you try to crime, cram everything in, especially if you're if you're familiar with symbolism or um, Kabbalah or any outside sources that chakras, you never try to cram it all in. Use the one that's right. Use the one that's right. Definitely. I repeat myself when under stress. Yeah, right. <laughs> right, this is seven of coins. We will see you again soon in a reading. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Now.